So I've got a Dell Optiplex 7040 with Windows 10 Professional installed on it and it's installed on a low capacity solid state drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a system image, save it onto an external hard drive and then create a bootable USB to restore it to the new solid state drive. Now this system has been set up with a Microsoft account and it's Windows 10 Pro. So the operating system drive has been encrypted with BitLocker and I've got some files in the folders and I'm just going to open up disk management to have a look at the operating system boot drive. So this is disk zero and as you see it's the tiny 120 gigabyte M2 SSD. Okay, so I've got some programs installed on this. So Chrome, Mendeley, Office, and then system drivers and stuff that's in built into Windows 10. Okay, so I've downloaded Macroom Reflect from their website and I'll accept the user account control and begin the installation. Okay, so I'll select next and I'll accept the license agreement, select next and I'm going to use it at home so I'll select home and I don't want to register it just now so I'll uncheck that box and select next and I don't actually want a desktop shortcut so I'll go back and uncheck that and select next and then finish. Okay, so I'll select finish and I'll launch Macrium Reflect. So the first thing I want to do is select backup and backup windows. So we'll leave all the partitions selected on the operating system boot drive and we'll select the location to store the image. So this is going to be on my external hard drive. And I've already got an Optiplex 7040 folder, so I'll just create a subfolder in it called Windows 10 1809, so I know the build of Windows 10. And I'm going to select Next, Next, and then Finish, and then OK. And now it'll go ahead and create the system image. So this may take up to a couple of hours, depending on the speed of your computer and how much stuff you have on it. So mine's is done now, so I can select OK. And now in the next stage, I need to create bootable media. So I'm going to select the icon to create bootable media. Now this version seems to have a wee bug. Um, every single USB flash drive I put in it said not supported. So I'm going to get it to create a uh, ISO instead and then I'll use Rufus to use this ISO to create a bootable USB. So I want to save this to my external hard drive. So I'll change the location and then I'll select build. And it may take a few moments to build this ISO. So I've sped up the recording again. And now it's done, so I can select OK. And now I can close down Macrium Reflect. So I'm going to use the program called Rufus to make the bootable USB. Now I've just had a wee folly. I put the ISO on the USB flash drive, which will obviously not work if I try and load the ISO to make a bootable USB. So let's move it onto the external hard drive and let's launch Rufus and accept the uh, user account control prompt. So let's select the uh, Macrium Reflect ISO and we want it to use the GPT partition scheme and the file format as FAT32. 
you want these settings unless your computer is older than 2011 then you'll need to use the MBR partition scheme. If your computer is from 2011, you'll need to check if you've got a UFI bias. So I've made my bootable media, and what we want to do now is power off the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the solid state drive in it. So I've got a list of recommendations for replacing your system drives, so some links on getting the Dell manual, seeing how easy it is to get to the system drives and seeing what type of system drives you have. And then I've got some links to crucial solid state drives. So if you're going to buy one of these anyway, could you use the affiliate Amazon links on my website and it will help fund the running costs of my website and the cost for test hardware. So I've replaced the SSD in my Optiplex 7040 and now I'm going to press F12 to get to the boot menu. And I see that the boot mode is set to UFI and secure boot is on. And that's the way it should be for a Windows 10 installation. So we'll see the Macrium Reflect splash screen. And here what we want to do is select browse for an image file. So we want to select our external hard drive now, my external hard drive came up as drive C, so don't panic here. This is just what the Bidwell Media sees it as. It won't change your external hard drive to C, and the operating system won't be installed on the external hard drive. So what we want to do is load the image, and then what we want to do is select Restore Image. And now, for some annoying reason, when I clean installed Windows 10 version 1809, it gave me a recovery partition at the end after the operating system boot drive and this causes some minor problems so let's just load the new solid state drive and we want to copy the selected partitions so you see it's not filling up the solid state drive and if I select the main partition the one that has partition size in gigabytes then you see that it's apparently at maximum so this is a limitation of Mercurium Reflect that it cannot extend partitions unless they're at the far right of the drive so what we're going to do is select undo and we're going to drag and drop each partition so we're going to drag and drop the first one drag and drop the second one drag and drop the fourth one and we're going to drag and drop the main operating system partition and this will be on the far right. And now we can change its properties and we can set it to be maximum size. And we can select OK and then Next. And then it will warn me that BitLocker is not enabled, so I'll just select OK here. And then I'll select Finish. So basically when Macrium Reflect makes the, the image within Windows, it disables BitLocker. So let's select OK. And now we can close Mercurium Reflect. So this empty solid state drive should now have the Windows 10 image on it and should load normally. And there we go, there's a lock screen so I can log in with this test email account. 
Okay, so now we can just go through the computer. So we can have a look and see the operating system drive. Doesn't have the padlock on it, so BitLocker isn't enabled, as I said. And we can just check the user folders to make sure all the files that we backed up in the image are there. So great, they are there. And if we have a look at disk management, we can see that the solid state drive is larger now. And we can see the difference in the partition sizes and also in the order of the partitions. And we can check that all our programs are there. So these were all installed when we made the system image. Okay, so what we can do is enable BitLocker now. So I'm going to right click the operating system boot drive and select turn on BitLocker. So it's recommended you save your BitLocker key to your Microsoft account. And it's also recommended you save the key to a file. Now obviously you don't want to save the key to your actual operating system boot drive because it's the equivalent of locking yourself out your house and leaving your keys in the house. So because the PC's already in use, we'll select that option and we'll use the best encryption for this device. So we can run the, the check to see if our system's compatible for BitLocker, but we know it is because we had it enabled before, right? So we'll be told to restart and we'll restart and log in. And in the background, BitLocker encryption will begin and we just leave it to do its thing. This may take a couple hours. And that's it done. So what we can do is just open computer and we can see that the C drive now has its padlock, meaning it's got BitLocker encryption.